It's, it's usually on Thursday or Friday of uh, the following week of the conference tournament. Young and Gullet to jump it up in the middle. Palm Beach Atlantic in their dark navy blue and silver uniforms. Ackert in the steel with the dark and teal numbers. And the tip is controlled by the point guard Marco Biori for the Eckerd College Tritons on their home floor. They attack at the left end. A 3-2 zone, a high 3-2 zone. will match up opportunity, so different look. Right away, Ingram fires up the three from straight away and puts the Tritons on top 3-0. And that's going to be a pick-your-poison type situation for Palm Beach Atlantic. If they're going to set up in a zone, they're going to give up some three-point shots, and the Tritons are making it. That's going to make things very hard for them. A drive to the basket and a wild air ball by Dakota Zinzer as McLaurin was out on him on the perimeter. The ball out of bounds over to Eckerd. 3 nothing lead for the Tritons, just 35 seconds in. Fiore and Ingram probing out top. There's Young, doubled in the zone. Underneath the bucket, missed. A little bunny missed by McLaurin. Doesn't miss those often, as we attested in the pregame. Palm Beach Atlantic the other way. Down by three. Near steal by Fiore. And then Trevon Young almost corralled it, but off his fingertips, right in front of the scorer's table. And Palm Beach Atlantic catches a break, maintaining possession. Good active hands there by T.Y. And... You know, Mar we were talking about Marco's motor. I mean, he just constantly harasses. He, he just he won't go away. But I do want to talk about that pass. That's one of the things that makes T.Y. very tough. He sees the double team come in, and he's patient. And then he delivers a pass, a rare miss around the basket by Drew Sean, but a really nice job there by T.Y., some interior passing. Just over a minute gone by. Basketball in the hands of the freshman, Jasmine. Gives it up. Ball tipped away down toward the corner, diving Trayvon Young trying to come over the basketball once again, but it is out of bounds down in the corner. Eight to shoot for the Sailfish. Titans trying to dig in defensively, and just you can see their energy level and how active they are, really harassing other teams to take low percentage shots. Zinzer tosses the inbounds in toward Jasmine. Uh, he fades off one foot with a short jumper. Young the rebound for the Tritons. Remains 3-0 effort. It's actually Gullet on the shot, not Jasmine. And Gullet, you can see already just physically just get undersized. Young slips a pass in to Zabla Vicious. Ball tapped out. Zabla Vicious gets it back and is fouled from behind. Shot won't go, but two free throws coming for Paulius Zabla Vicious. I like the attack there by Keyshawn Ingo, a nice pass. And, you know, I, I'd like to see PZ trying to get opportunities around the basket. You know, good interior defense by Palm Beach Atlantic collapsing, but just not being able to corral that loose ball, those 50-50 balls. When you're on the road, you want to get those. You've got to win that battle. A little slow that time, and Eckers able to take advantage and get PZ to the line. First free throw, pure for Zabla Vicious. Second is as well. 5 nothing Eckerd. Officials for tonight's game, John Antonassen, Landon Brandis, and Kenny Totten. 18-15 to go, first quarter. Fiori hounding the opposing point guard, Michael Stones. Stones gives up the basketball. And a drive and ball stripped away. Young comes up with it. Example of Vicious. Not the man you usually see carry the ball across the timeline. Here's Biori. Floats the pass in for Trayvon Young. Young with Golet on him. One hand whip pass back out. Zabla Vicious three in the air. Comes off the right side of the rim. And the rebound winds up hitting the hardwood and is controlled by Stones. Nice job by the Tritons getting back on defense. Palm Beach really out to the races but just can't get anything easy. And they're working hard to try to force an easy, get an easy shot, but good defense by the Tritons. On that last possession there, I liked what PZ did. He separated from Trayvon Young to pull that defender away, and he had it forced him to commit. Opened up an open shot there. Gullet trying to push his way into Zabla Vicious. High arcing fadeaway on the turnaround. Off the lip of the rim. Young the rebound. Here's McLaurin. A kick out. Ingram, left wing. Off the front of the rim and a good seal off by Gullet to get the rebound for the Sailfish. And a long pass ahead in the corner. Three in the air. Three in the net for Marshall Riddle, who's the shooter we said they have to find. Lost him in transition. And he trims the Eckerd lead to 5-3. That's a fantastic. That starts on a great textbook box out by Gullet. That was, 
he, he made a great point there. And, and just watching how well he sealed that and then was able to get the ball up. And nice job getting to their spot on the transition. These players are knowing they need to get to their, their spots to open up that, that floor game, that transition game. McLaurin into the middle of the zone, and his pass is stolen, but the foot of Stones hit the line on the sideline down toward the corner. He had the steal, was on his belly looking to push off a pass, and his back foot clipped the sideline. Eckerd catches a break this time with 16.30 to go in the half. Good piece of hustle there, just can't quite keep his feet in bounds. And Dushan with a nice knifing attack towards the basket, just good rotation by Palm Beach Atlanta cutting off that interior passing lane. So some adjustments early on, now they get a chance to set up their zone. Three substitutions came in for the Sailfish, including their leading scorer, DeAndre Jackson. Midway through the shot clock, Young swarms, pushes up the shot, won't go. And the Sailfish able to corral the rebound, Jasmine ripped it down that time. 5-3, Eckerd, quick trigger three for the Sailfish. That's down. Riddle has all six for Palm Beach Atlantic. 6-5, the visitors. Looks like a, a delay game warning. The ball is not let go, but you can see that sharp shooting from outside and quick release, too. I mean, I that, he didn't need much room to get that off. And that's when you're really taking your, you know, the shoot, outside shooters who can get their release just really going. I mean, no no time, like you said. That's what makes them much more deadly. Young trying the three from the top of the key. Knocks it down. And he's got that ability. We said it. He has the ability to stretch the defense, force him to come out. And if he's going to hit that shot, it just becomes that much harder to guard. 15-34 and a travel called against Palm Beach Atlantic. That was Lucas Morales. And brings us to the first media timeout. 8-6, Eckerd in front after the Trayvon Young three. And Trayvon said, you know, on his senior night, he does hope to continue his career professionally. And Blake Morrow is another one of the players that you can see Palm Beach really showing some depth as well. But Blake Morrow provides that scoring punch. And I like this 1-3-1 change that Coach Balls is doing. And that really tries to make Eckert have to shift. Sean McLaurin operating on the baseline with space. He scores off the window. And that beating a 1-3-1 is attacking, drawing the defense. If you can get into the middle. Another three, a long one for Marshall Riddle. He has all nine for PBA. He, he needs a game tonight to make it. But if you watch how they attack this 1-3-1, attacking that middle, getting the ball in the middle and try to work with diagonals. That's, that's the key. Baseball pass, cross court, Young to Biore for the three. 13-9, and Riddle pitchers again. He's got four threes already. 13-12, Ecker leading, and the Sailfish are all kinds of fired up. He's feeling it right now, and I tell you, we said it, he needs to have that type of shooting performance. You know, when you're Ecker, just relax, run your stuff. You don't have to start panicking. But give Marshall Riddle credit. Those are not easy shots, and he's catching and letting it go. Young, long on the jumper, just above the baseline. Rebound corralled by the Sailfish. They come down looking to take back the lead. We've got Blake Morrow guarding Riddle. That's going to be a good matchup. Matthew Johnson's pass fumbled along the baseline. Shot off the bottom of the backboard, and Young has the rebound. They're piling up for him in the early going. 13.55 to go in the half. 13.12, Eckerd in front, and that is stripped away from Morrow. One on two, the other way. Who cut it? What a block by McClellan on Jasmine! Oh, my! With an unbelievable job staying in the play, and he got the weak side. A nice job to force him away from the basket, and that opened up the shot block ability. There by True Shaw, we're seeing some great basketball here early on, some high-flying action. And Got to give credit, Marshall Riddle right all the way catching. I mean, this is some, you know, I did not expect to see necessarily a track meet. <laughs> Sprint coming out here early on. I mean, Radonchik in to give Young a breather. Again, Myron Hagens is out tonight. He missed Saturday's game as well. Marshall Riddle has had the hot hand. He's 4-4 from three. Guarded tight that time by Bianco. Diori tips the pass, but it is 
maintained, pass comes out, and another three, but this time it's Lucas Morales with the bucket, PBA up 15-13, and there was already a warning issued on this. There is a technical on the delay of game here. That's a, and that's, I mean, this is early, 13-25, and Gullen, I think, got called for a bad time, so my question is, how do they administer this? So this is obviously counted as a team foul because it's a technical, but also, does that go to the individual? Because then that could add another potential personal foul, or is it considered a bench technical? And give any time a chance you give Blake Morrow a chance to get yeah. to the line. Those are almost pretty much automatic points. Makes the free throw, cuts it to 15 14. It looks like it's a bench technical, so that only counts against your team foul total, but not an individual. But still, I mean, you don't see that very often. <laughs> And no. to have that, that quick back-to-back. -back. Less than seven minutes in. 15-14, Palm Beach Atlantic in front of Eckerd. Sharp shooting from outside already. Five triples for Palm Beach Atlantic. We knew that was going to be part of their offense tonight. Rodonchik, McClorn. Dribbles to the free throw line. Ingram back out. McClorn has a foot on the line. Knocks down the jumper. It's a two and it puts Eckerd in front 16-15. And you can tell he's not used to being that far away from the basket laying a fly. A 19-foot two-point shot. Marshall Riddle has the ball chased out of his hands. Matthew Johnson now floats a pass inside. An opening under the basket for Gullet. He scores through contact. He's shot three a couple times under there. Strong finish around the basket. Good collapse by PZ and Radoncic to make that a tough shot, but a nice job using his body to go up over the top. 17-16, Sailfish in front. Ingram handling the basketball. Radoncic puts up the jumper. Off the back iron, and the rebound is pulled down. Leaping high in the air, Golic to secure that one. Here's DeAndre Jackson. Can't get the runner, but an offensive board. Comes out, Riddle's open, but finally he misses. And a over the back foul against Golic. Sends it the other way with Eckert. You've got to let that fly if you're Marshall Riddle. I mean, he, he, those, those first four just were nothing but net. And that's a good look straight on, good offensive rebound. So him going to the bench now, and, and this is where he said mentally, you know, you're echoed, and you know, Coach Ryan's always going to have his group in, ready to go, but you've got to love this if you're Palm Beach Atlantic. The first two games, first game was just a blowout in the first half. They played better at Palm Beach Atlantic on Saturday. A moving and screen called against Rashawn McClure. It's a tough call, but you got to hold your spot and let the defense get through. You can't roll as the defender is trying to get through the screen, and you don't see that consistently called, but there's a tough situation there on uh, on that roll. Well, we've reached the second. And you can see some of these screens are staggered screens. Now with Marshall going to the to the bench, Palm Beach Atlantic you know, has some players that can score, so we'll see how they get some other points uh, with... Marshall Real going to the bench, but you got Gullet inside, and he's, you know, so far doing a pretty good job battling with T.Y. Michael Stones got Swarm, gets the ball away, left corner. Another three goes up from Lucas Morales, comes off the rim. McLaurin with a head of steam, got stripped on the way to the basket, and then gets called for his second foul in the span of 20 seconds. And that's a T.Y. immediately asking, saying his arm got ripped, but the backside, he beat the defender on the inside out dribble, but that backside rotation was there. And that's, a, you know, that's a tough call, but it's one that I think he was set, and losing that ball made him go even more, it uh, looks like, out of control. So now, with Drew Sean with two fouls, that adds another element here to this rotation by Eckerd. I think losing the ball there was a big part of it. The defender was very deep, may have been the no-charge circle, but Trishon didn't have the ball when he went in there. Jackson up with a sky right hand off the window, no good. Here's Morrow driving from the left wing, up under, won't go, tapped long and out to Ingram, coming to get it on the left sideline. Straight away three try, Morrow puts it down and puts Eckerd back in front, 18, 19 rather, 17. And here comes the pace of play picking up. My goodness, Morales again. Front rim, no. And Morrow with a great seal off. It's a great box out by Blake Morrow there on the inside there. And 
does a little bit of everything and good opportunity here for the Tritons to try to build a little bit of a lead. Morrow to Young in the corner, Ingram left side, too long on the three, Stavrev pushes the rebound to Bianco, here's Young, two feet in the paint, Stavrev right corner, high arc, three! Good hustle by Travis Bianco getting that rebound. You know, those second chance points can kill a team and Palm Beach Atlantic's got to clean up the glass, but a good take there to draw the foul. So, you know, I like the energy level, Palm Beach Atlantic. They're not panicking. They make a mistake. They come right back and they're attacking. Michael Stone's the aggressive take to the rim. He'll shoot two free throws as a result. The back-to-back -back threes by Morrow and Stavrev putting Eckert up 22-17 for these three or rather, three tosses for Stone. Short on the first free throw. 10.20 to go in the first half. Another big run of substitutes into the game. Jules Jasmine back in for Palm Beach Atlantic. Milos Kostek in. Zinzer back on the floor. Stones makes the second free throw. Marshall Riddle back out there as well. Fiore back in. He was the only substitute for Eckerd during that line change. So back to the 1-3-1 one, one now. And Bianco left corner. Bangs on the three. Trying, really shooting the ball as well after you know those three-point shots by Riddle. Here's another one. Riddle back iron. He's missed two in a row, but Zinzer the offensive rebound. And then a pass inside. Jasmine looking for Riddle cutting in an unsettled situation. Bounced the ball right on by him and out of bounds to Eckerd with a seven-point lead. Eckerd's six of nine. So that's a pretty good way of offsetting the shooting of, of, of Palm Beach Atlantic. And you're seeing Palm Beach Atlantic changing their defense. Changing their defense. They're back down to a 2-3. They've gone some 1-3-1. One one, a couple sets in man. And I like the different looks to try to throw the rhythm off for the Trions. The Trions have taken advantage of these, of these switches and been able to get the ball in the right people's hands for open shots. Young in a crowd. Pulls the ball back up off the hardwood and draws the foul. Had it knocked away briefly, but he's so strong in there, it's like his hands have a gravitational pull to the basketball. Just has to get a little bit of a piece of the ball, and he can reel it in. Just built so well, just built, you know, solid base, good size, shoulders, just really just really tough to, to really get into him because he's so hard to move and that time you're right he lost that ball but because of that space he's able to keep the defenders off of him get it back and then draw the foul ty's first free throw good 26 18. coach bowles is calling for a three second violation saying well he never you know even just he lost the ball he's still in there it doesn't reset it only resets on the shot All of a sudden, a nine-point game potentially. It doesn't feel like it's a nine-point game. When you talk about winning four-minute segments of the basketball game, Eckert has dominated this one after Palm Beach Atlantic was up 17-16 at the under 12. Now 27-18 in Eckert's favor. Stones handling the basketball, drives by Stavrev, draws the contact, but the shot wouldn't spin down for him. Hung on the rim for a long time. Two more free throws coming for Stones. And I like his aggressive take. They're really attacking the basket well, and that puts a lot of pressure the Tritons on that rotation because not only are they getting to the basket, but it also opens up opportunities to try to throw to drive and dish. And with this team who can knock down threes, that's the Tritons are going to have to stop ball penetration. That's that's going to be an adjustment that they've got to keep their base in front of their plate and force them towards the sideline and not give up wide open, not wide open lanes, but just allowing that, that full head of steam to the basket. Stones made the first, short on the second. Another one of two trip for him, 27-19. Eckerd pushes it quickly, Bianco way long on the three, but yo, right there, Johnny on the spot with the lefty leg. Weapons here, 
and they've been able to play with some of the best scoring teams in the country. I mean, not country, but in our conference. You know, with Barry, who loves to score on track meet as well. So, you know, it's not one of those games where you get a team that likes to keep it low scoring out of their element. They have the ability to be explosive with the dynamic offensive players that. Bullet dumps the ball inside Jasmine. A good move, but missed the shot. Got his miss. Missed again. Young tapping the ball around. Gola able to pull the rebound out of the crowd for the Sailfish. And they keep possession down by 10. Nice Matthew Johnson, a turnaround 15-footer. But Young back to grab the rebound. That was too strong. That was some good defense there. Two-man game, Marco and Trayvon. Good piece of high screen there by Palm Beach Atlanta. Couldn't quite get it open, though. Stavrev deflected a pass intended for Ingram and sets the screen for Ingram, but Keyshawn does not use it. And Young traveled as he looked to get going off the dribble from behind the arc, taking a hard tumble as well. And oh. he may need some attention here. A little fast, and it's always something you want to check because as soon as that trainer or coach comes off the, floor, off the bench to look at their player, that player's got to come out. So... That's a good piece of communicating there. You know, Marco went over there, said he's all right. And he immediately turned to the bench. Young has a half dozen rebounds so far, seven points as well. 8.09 to go in the first half. Ten point lead for Eckerd. Palm Beach Atlantic has the ball. Handled by Matthew Johnson. Here's Gola against Zabla Vicious. Creating space and a good cut basket and the foul for Lucas Morales. You see, nice action by Palm Beach Atlanta. They've got a little bit of, of two things happening at once. Basically, Marshall Will getting an elevator screen on the weak side going left. But then you're opening up Gola to get a cross screen to open up to get the ball inside on the right side. And that time, Good job by really become the primary ball handler off the court. Winner of this game will face the winner of the Florida Southern and Lynn game. Free throw up and good for Morales. At halftime, we will have a check of the out-of-town scoreboard. 29-22, Eckerd with the basketball, and a seven-point lead. Trayvon Young palms the basketball, gives it off. Blake Morrow draws a double team in the zone. Now a trap comes out on Viore. Scramble to recover. Zabla Vicious open left side, missed the three, and the rebound corralled by Palm Beach Atlantic. Good piece of defense for us from Mark on that hedge all the way up to half court. And then a great steal by Ingram playing some help defense from behind. He catches the pass ahead and a Euro step to the bucket for the finger roll. And that transition two man game so hard to stop. Good awareness by T.Y. to come set that pick and roll. And the scramble back by Palm Beach Atlantic to get back on defense wasn't in time to open up and open up a drive lane. Nice job by Keyshawn Ingram noticing that. 31-22, Eckerd in front. Gullet holds the ball above his head on the right block. And able to pull the ball through. Two feet in the paint. Hangs in the air. Scores with the right hand. A great individual effort by Grant Gullet. He'll go to the line trying to complete a three-point play. I like his patience. Gullet caught it. And he, you know, the commitment for that double team wasn't quite there. Kind of in no man's land. Marco was. And you saw PZ. I'm surprised he didn't call a hand check because he kept, he had a full flat hand against his back. But just that patience, he was able to get PZ on his back and a good solid take by Gullet. And you're seeing some of his ability, even though a little undersized, he's got ability to score around the basket. Young almost stumbled out of bounds, trailing the rebound on the missed free throw. But Acker does get possession, leading by seven. 31-24, 6.35 to go, first half. Tomorrow around a screen from Ingram to put up the three and did not get the roll. And the Sailfish crashing to the boards, trying to cut into a seven point lead. Riddle with the basketball, he's been dangerous with it. Ingram playing defense on Jackson, he has been quiet. 
A couple contested looks for him. Here's Johnson, pins the ball to his hip. Aliyup Nicola, who misses the bank shot. Overhand pass ahead by Young. Off and running again are the Tritons. Under six to go in the half. Ingram finds Young trailing. Fiore around the screen from Young. Pushes up a floater, left short. Got his own miss and got fouled. Good piece of hustle falling the shot. Thought he was throwing a lob inside. Looked like he had an opportunity to get, maybe get a lob inside of T.Y. But I tell you, these are the type of possessions that Palm Beach Atlantic is going to basically get mad at themselves. They had a point blank layup on this side. Couldn't quite get it to finish. And every one of those opportunities are must have for the try. I mean, for Palm Beach Atlantic if they're going to try to to put themselves in position to steal a win here. Fiori's first free throw, good. Radonchik and Stavrev back into the game. 32-24, Eckerd in front, 5.46 remaining this half. Fiori's second free throw, that's good as well. 33-24. Here's Daly back in to give Marco a break. And now with that combination, it's a little bit more, less, you're not taking as much offense off the court having, you know, that one-on-one -on -one sub between Daly and Bayori. This is Johnson. Puts one foot in the lane, pivots around, swings it back out. Kostick doesn't hang on to it long, just resets Johnson. Ten to shoot, back to Kostick. He's a mile from the basket. Steps into a long three and hits it with Radoncic out there on it. That's not an easy shot, and Radoncic did a good job playing defense. I think he takes that shot ten times. I'm not sure he's hitting four of them. Here's Stavrov on the drive. Has it stolen. Cross-court pass. Riddle. Someone needs to find him. He gets the three up and swishes it. Bianco too late arriving. And suddenly Eckert is only up three, 33-30. And that's the type of thing I was just of taking off on the fast break. It was find Riddle and hit him with the long pass. And then he went to work. Under five minutes to go in the half, 33-30. Eckert with the lead. Morrow with the basketball. Daly now handles it over left wing. Midway through the shot clock, top of the zone, moving left to right, bounce in, Young, blocked from behind, got the ball back, and able to draw the foul. Just an aggressive take, I mean, good defense on the first go at it by Palm Beach Atlantic, but Trayvon, too tough, goes right into it, gets another opportunity, and now he's going to the line to shoot two. But when you're Palm Beach Atlantic, you look at that possession, you're like, we did everything we needed to do. But he's just, you know, good players sometimes just a little bit extra. 33-30, Eckert leading two free throws coming for Young. First hits nothing but the Niowa. Second free throw on the way, comes off the back iron. Long rebound, handled by the Sailfish. Four point game, moving into the late stages of the first half. Stones finds Riddle Morrow right there on it. And you can see right on his hip, right on that hip defense, not allowing that shot to even be released. A high carom on a three point miss by DeAndre Jackson. And out of bounds over to Eckert as that ball bounded away to the right corner. Leaping in there was Morales looking for the rebound, but wound up just swi swiping the ball across the court and out of bounds. Well, that defense right there is some textbook defense. Blake Morrow, give him credit. If you're watching this at home, that is how you guard a shooter in the half court. And he, he's playing that, that shooting hip. And that shooting hip just it makes it so much harder to catch and release. And those are the small techniques that you're doing as you're watching a game. When you're on the bench, watching that type of, of action, knowing how to adjust as the game goes on. Inside Young, catch and score, easy as can be on the over-the-top pass from Bianco. 36-30 Eckerd leading as they continue to weather McLaurin's absence. Bullet got Young on his heels, but still couldn't get by him. Stones moves the ball out. 
Jackson with it. He has been quiet. Daly. Jackson turns the corner on him, but too strong on the floater. Bianco has the rebound, but is called for the foul in the process. I'm going to say a displacement. That's a tough, but I think it's the right call. That time, Travis, a little too low, just kind of used his shoulder to push out the way. And what ends up happening. After the foul on Bianco, which was his second person. Goal it with four points so far. And short on the front end, Stavrev corrals the rebound. Stavrev giving some, some good minutes helping with Dushan on the bench and making his presence known with some plays. Fiori trying to draw the foul down in the corner. Young unable to corral the rebound, dribbled off his leg. Six point lead for record, but the Sailfish take the ball back as Trevon Young continues to have a friendly dialogue on his way down the court. Oh, and I, that ball was off. And I look like Stavrov got, got away with it, two hands in the back there to almost keep it. So sometimes the expression is the ball doesn't lie. I think Palm Beach, you know, probably in that basketball with that no call down low. And here is Riddle again. Short <laughs> that time, it spins off. That's a heck of a screen up top. Blake kind of lost a step there, and that starts with a staggered screen. That's one of the hardest things to defend. He got hit down low and then hit again at the top, but still enough to just knock the shot off, and that didn't miss by much. Ackard with the ball midway through the shot clock. Morrow piercing the zone on the baseline, then tries to bounce the ball in. It is stolen away by DeAndre Jackson. He finds Riddle. Riddle across the timeline, zips the pass in. Jasmine dribbles off his own foot, and then a bailout foul call. Stavrev, I mean, let the arm leak out there. I don't know that it affected the play. And that's what you always look at as a referee. You know, that's one of the biggest things that they're trained on doing is looking at the impact. You know, was there advantage gain? And that's a foul where I don't think there was advantage gain on, on Stavrev there. That ball was out ahead of time and the ball was open for Blake to pick up and a good fortuitous break for Palm Beach and they're still here in this game they're, they're making every opportunity to, to stick around Jules Jasmine short that's the front end of back to back one and ones missed by the Sailfish so a couple opportunities that have gone by the wayside in a six point game shooting well from the three point line but struggling everywhere else Fiore getting the hand off from Zablovicious. Young looking to work high-low with PZ. Morrow, not a clean catch. Zablovicious keeps the ball high as he's doubled and calls for the travel in the double team with 2.08 remaining first half. A little bit of uncharacteristic turnover there and Coach Ryan debating the call. 36-30, Palm Beach Atlantic trailing, but with possession. Stones calling for a screen. Looked it to Jackson, but he was covered coming around the screen. Gullet bounces the ball inside, Jasmine. Riddle, he's stuck, seven to shoot. Gullet, he had to get away with an extra step there. Officials call it the jump ball. It keeps it with the sailfish, but with only four to shoot. And I think that's a poor two. I mean, that's a, a break for Palm Beach. I mean, it looked like the travel happened before, you know, the momentum kind of took, and then they wrapped them up. But now they've got to be mindful. So what kind of set does Coach Balls a run? It should be a quick hitter. A bounce in quick. And they're going to force Riddle to fire it up from 27 feet. And he knocks it down. And Coach Ryan very frustrated there because Blake Morrow stopped playing defense. He looked at the shot clock and you play to the whistle, you play to the horn. And <laughs> especially on a player like that, I, this is some great shooting we're seeing from Riddle tonight. Six three-pointers. Morrow had the ball knocked away from him as he jumped. He got it back. Ingram fade away too. Off the right side of the rim, Biore gets the rebound and then is able to throw the ball off of Michael Stone's feet to maintain possession with 68 seconds remaining in the half. Good hustle to keep the ball alive, a new 30. This 
probably not the way that Eckford thought this might go, but knowing that this team, you know, is certainly capable with their shooting ability from the outside and also just their ability to score and, and, and control pace. Young <laughs> scores through a crowd. What a tough, tough shot there in traffic. And then Viore with a steal, taking it away from Riddle. Numbers, if the Tritons hurry. Morrow steps out to the three-point line, but still had a toe on it as he hits the wall, too. I like the confidence from the sophomore. He said, I don't want that, I want it all, and there just wasn't quite enough behind the line, but a big shot. I like that, you know, and he's a competitor. Just watching the way he plays, you know, you got to live with some of the mistakes because he plays so hard. 40 to 33, Eckerd in front, a long three-point miss by DeAndre Jackson, and Eckerd can realistically take the last shot with only a one-second difference between the shot and game clock. So we'll see what they do here. Palm Beach Atlantic playing man, so they do a little one for high action. It's usually what they like to run and try to get a high screen with TY. They're going to do it with PZ here. Around the screen, Ingram, and a moving screen. Nope, nope, it's going to go against Palm Beach Atlantic. And so Riddle took two hands and got up under, and that's what made him move. I thought they, you're right. I thought that they were going to call an offensive foul there. So now, but not a bad foul, though, either. I mean, you know, you have one to give, so that's a little bit of coaching there, strategy. So it looks like that was an intentional foul, especially doing away from the best. Sometimes you see the ball handler try to throw a shot up. Now 6.9, plenty of time. Morrow. Gets it right back on the inbounds. And loses the handle, goes to the floor, shovels it off. Sambo and Vicious, almost in and out. Eckert leads 40-33 on the way to the locker room. Averages 13 per game. And uh, Eckert completely took, took him off balance. He, didn't, he really didn't take a single on balance in rhythm shot. McCorn does get an early touch right out of half. And it winds up a couple passes later being a turnover. In a seven point game, down along the baseline, and oh, Jasmine answers the bell early. And just too much inside, let him inside the, you know, the angle right around the basket, but that pass on this set has got to be towards the baseline, through towards the middle on the high side where the defense was, and just got to sense that good job by Palm Beach Atlantic forcing that turnover. 40 to 35, Eckerd up by five. Fiore, right wing, three in the air, missed, and a three-second whistle. And so, Palm Beach Atlantic gets the ball back with a chance to make this a one-possession game in the second half. And that's what you wanted to open up with, two good possessions defensively, forced two turnovers, and got the ball inside, and they scored around the basket, something they struggled with a little bit. Stone's waving for Riddle to come get the basketball. Grab it with his back to the basket. Now looking for a window, Zinzer floats it in toward Jasmine. Jasmine throws it to the corner, three in the air. Riddle missed long on his first attempt at this end. Good look though. You know, Marco got caught kind of seeing away from him and Riddle did a good job. Letting it fly, didn't miss that one by much either. Young, his man falls down, bank up and in. Bullock took a tumble. Two points for Young to extend the lead back to seven. And that can be one of those frustrating things as a coach is there's contact and there's no call. Does he flop? Does he not flop? Good finish. That's a tough thing not to land on the body. Jasmine finds Zinzer. He misses Long with an open look from the left corner. Viore quick to the basketball. Eckert up seven coming the other way nearly two minutes in to the second half. Euro step by Ingram. Winds up throwing the ball away, putting it into a crowd. Pass ahead, Zinzer barely over the timeline, getting his feet down. Unsettled situation, Zinzer looks to go off the dribble. A high floating shot, and then a foul in the rebounding action. And probably not the shot Palm Beach Atlantic was looking for on that possession out of Zinzer. Nice sequence there. If you saw what happened, Marco picked up, uh, looked like Zinzer with the ball, but then passed it to Riddle. And Dushan, with the communication, came up and, and, and was able to get there. It looked like I thought they were going to lose track of Riddle again. Good piece of defense there by Eckerd. McLaurin around Young's screen to the elbow. Zablovicious looks around, finds Dushan midway through the shot clock. Over to Ingram around Zablovicious' screen. Three in the net to extend the screen. Three in the net to extend the lead back to double digits. And that's just a tough shot. 
Good pick and roll and couldn't get over the screen. Nice job by PZ. That won't show up in the stat book, but that's a great screen. 45-35, a turnover by the Sailfish. And Eckerd threatening to start to pull away as they have matched their largest lead at 10. A couple possessions early, try and weather it. And then they score back-to-back -back possessions, and now all of a sudden they stretch it back to 10. McLaurin into the lane. Zabla vicious. Up oh, and under. 47-35. Good finish. Good interior passing. It's a big possession for Palm Beach Atlantic. Stones, Jackson down the lane. Jackson scores for the first time with a lefty lay-in. Extending the arm to protect the basketball as he came down the lane. That starts with a dribble handoff once again. So good job getting, getting to the basket. Good finish. They needed that basket. It gives them some confidence after going scoreless the last three possessions. 47-37 at the left elbow. McLaurin out young. He has hit a three. One dribble. Ingram three up. Off the mark. An off-balance attempt. Shot it sort of flat-footed and fading away. And Palm Beach Atlantic has the ball back. 47-37 is the deficit they face. Good closeout there. And forced Keyshawn, like you said, leaning back a little bit, didn't quite get going to the basket. Stones walks the ball across, calling for a high screen, then passes away from it. Ingram all over Riddle. Morales in the high post. Stones drives baseline. Had his shot blocked, grabbed by Ingram. Has McLaurin over his left shoulder. Can he get it to him? Yes! Lefty finish in transition. Good flip. He wanted to get it up sooner. Good defense, but that good foot pass. And that was a tough catch. Good finish. And you can see the transition is, is going to be key, I think, to get Drew Sean back in this game offensively. 49-37. Eckerd in front. Riddle. Around the screen. Now has Zablovich is on him. Shoots over him. Goes down and will shoot three free throws. That's a shooter technique you've seen develop over the last few years where they kind of start leaning back a little bit and have their feet, they fling their legs out. And PZ did a nice job closing out, but that by, falling, by flinging his feast and famine, you know, sometimes what happens with those outside shooters. Now, he also has only made 24 two-point baskets the entire season, so it doesn't do a lot else to keep teams honest. But you can imagine how, when Jackson is going, how those two would be able to play off each other as the first free throw rolls in for Riddle. That's right, and you know, that's one of the things, especially in this conference, when you have teams like a Rollins that plays a zone, you can see how they have beaten Rollins twice, especially with the fact that they have such a sharp shooter from outside. I mean, when you play teams that like to play zone, that's got to be a part of the weapons. Riddle calmly knocks down all three. He has 21 points to lead all scores. Eckerd, though, with a nine-point lead in the basketball, 15 and a half minutes to go to advance to the semifinals on Saturday. Morrow has the ball poked away, but somehow able to keep his dribble. Ball pulled off the floor by McLaurin. McLaurin, all sorts of shifty movement, but dribbles himself into the corner and now has to get the ball back out. Iori with five to shoot into a crowd. McLaurin, two to shoot, three in the air. Missed everything and a shot clock violation. A tough possession. Good job by Palm Beach Atlantic. So they knock down three free throws and play a really nice half-court set there defensively to force nothing towards the basket. Matthew Johnson with the basketball. Five minutes into the second half. Nine-point game. PBA looking to trim that lead. Riddle working off the dribble. A bounce pass down. And Jasmine misses the shot. Ball bounces out of bounds. And after last stays with the sailfish. Notice that little run made with T.Y. on the bench. And that rough offensive possession. You just you can see how the ball moves much better offensively when T.Y. is in the game. Jackson guarded by Ingram. Jasmine lost the ball, but is able to track it back down. Johnson left wing, 
pounds the ball into the floor and a blocking foul. Winds up being called away from the ball. Jasmine trying to cut. And I call that Blake Morrow getting a little too physical on some of those screens and he went to the ground almost uh, uh, trying to stay on that hip. And those are why those staggered screens can be really frustrating. When you're guarding a shooter like that and you're getting hit every time, it can get frustrating. At times, a little bit too much frustration led to that foul. Johnson lobs into Jasmine. He gets grabbed. That was a safety valve on that play. The first option was clearly opposite corner, and Eckert sealed it. Three fouls now on McClure. So that's an interesting dynamic. Does he stay in and have the danger of picking up his fourth foul? So does Coach try to give him a break? And Dave Bowser, what does he sense? Does he try to attack right at him? Pass comes to McClure with a head of steam, and he goes in for the big chance. Too much speed, too much space. And then Daly takes the pocket of the ball handler. McLaurin calling for it up top, but Daly had turned back away. Now Ingram down the lane block. Young gets hit, strip, pulls it back up, and foul. I'd like to see that run replay if that was on our screens, but nice job by Drew Shung. Just took it to a little extra gear and just created that space. Almost lost it, but a good flush. Coach Ryan certainly happy. He left him on the floor with three fouls for at least a possession or two. That's right. And I, <laughs> I, you know, I would have said, take him out. But that's, you know, that's just back-to-back -back steals. You know, every time Palm Beach Atlanta makes a few plays to try to steal that momentum, Eckert has answered tonight. Young makes the free throw. He has 15. He'll go with 11 rebounds. Sample of vicious in for McClure. 52-40, and there's another free throw coming here for T.Y. Fourteen oh five to go. Low crouch free throw going up and out, and rebounded by Golan. Twelve point game, and the Sailfish rush the ball down the floor. Johnson handling it. Golan guarded by Zablovicious. Johnson, Morales, Morales left wide open and calmly strokes the 17-footer. And he's shown not, a, not as quick as a release as Riddle, but just still very capable of knocking down the outside shot. That was too easy, too wide open. 52-42. Back to a 2-3 look in the zone for PBA. And that's when, you know, they start shifting their defense. A lot of that kind of making, trying to slow her. Ingram's three rolls off. Morales able to secure the rebound for the Sailfish. Now once again, Palm Beach Atlantic tries to cut things to single digits. Costa into Golan. Golan, double team. Tangs scores. That's an off balance. That's just tough. And once again, good patience. And he really has a presence about himself. But he hasn't got a lot of touches around the basket. Three of six for the game. I, I think that with... With PZ on him, that's a that's an opportunity for Palm Beach Atlanta to try to attack inside. It's an eight-point game, 52-44. Young goes storming down the lane to draw a foul. The workhorse is, is really filling it up. Now he's got to give himself opportunities to finish with some free throws. Well, you can certainly see, and we've been seeing it. Yeah, throughout this season, particularly down the stretch, Young more than willing to say, all right, we need somebody to be the guy. And Rashawn's not out there. I'll be the guy. I'll go get it. Makes the first freebie. <laughs> 12 48 to go. Another free throw coming in a nine-point game. Free throw up, too strong. Morales the rebound. Here's DeAndre Jackson. Quiet game for him. Costa comes with a high screen. There's the switch. And Jackson 
Able to briefly have an opening, but continued into a crowd and then fouls Ingram. Okay, if you watch Keyshawn Ingram on that, he went straight up. And that, I mean, elbows to ears is what you teach so you don't break that plane. He went straight up, exactly textbook job, being able to jump, leave your feet, but stay in your plane in your position and alter that shot and then pull the rebound on his way down. Well, everyone handed off assignments perfectly to you. You got the hedge on the screen by Bianco, let Daly recover, and then Ingram coming in as a help defender on the play. And, that, and that's, that's what makes him so tough defensively is that those small details to rotations and man-to-man -man defense. Bianco leaves a three-pointer short. Golet brings the ball into the front court himself. Johnson for the sailfish, bounces it down. Morales turned around in the lane, scored the basket, and a foul. Looks like he got bunked. I thought they were going to call it travel. Good finish by Morales, and he's been a pleasant surprise also, pro providing a little bit of a secondary score there, up over 10 tonight with that basket. Morales in double figures and a free throw coming. 53-46 the score, 12.06 to go. Theory and McLaurin back to the scorer's table for Coach Ryan. Free throw is short. The free throw line has not been kind to the Sailfish overall in this game. Remains a seven point game. Young holds the ball behind his head, gets it away. Now goes to work against Costick. Whips a pass opposite corner, Daly's three. Short, tap around, and Morales another rebound, but then throws it right into the hands of Daly, who lost the basketball. It's, they can dissect film, and they can easily see, we got to rebound better, we got to protect the ball better, we got to take better shots. For Eckerd, you're nitpicking double-digit wins, and that's a hard thing to keep people mentally, and, and I think mentally they've been in this game, but it's just part of that, that just a you know just a long time true factor of, of beating teams three times it's easier for the team that's lost to adjust where Donchick stands his ground against Goet shot missed short and in a seven point game Eckerd pushes the ball up the floor Ingram thought about the three moves it along right wing Viore around a screen where Donchick back over Ingram Ingram this time guns it up got it and once again, a two-man game on that side of the basketball. We saw him hit one earlier with PZ setting the screen. That screen opening you up, going under the screen. you got to go over the screen if you're Palm Beach Atlantic. Nice piece of shooting by Keyshawn. Way too much space for him. 56-46, Eckerd in front. Johnson, the Ori trying to call the travel on him as play continues. Golick into a crowd again. Shot won't go. And... Tom Ryan hands in the air saying that all the contact being initiated by the shooter there but Golan gets himself to the line for two but you're going to see a little bit of a difference there too because that time Radoncic had one hand up and the other hand out and yeah, Golan does create a lot of space he uses his body very well and you compare his frame to T.Y.'s frame Golan's a little bit undersized but he uses everyone he's very long very high long wingspan and that time he went right into Radoncic but that arm that elbow that forearm was on his hip and that's just the difference I think if Radoncic can get both hands up above his head and go elbows or ears I, I think it's a no call 10.37 to go nine point game second free throw on the way, no good. McLaurin and Young both in the game together again. Deshaun with the rebound there. Nine point game, starting front court out there. Fiori, full feet in the paint. Back out, McLaurin sets the screen, Ingram. Skies and rolls it home! And, and that time, just now the adjustment there. You saw Riddle, I believe, go over the top. But that opened up the lane because he was on the hip. And then just a nice attack and a great finish above the basket. Keyshawn Ingram has been huge here in the last four minutes of this game. Showed some springs on that basket and gets a chance for a three-point play. And he just, he's very stoic in the way he plays. You know, he's, he's never too high, never too low. And, and, but he is capable of scoring double digits and great finish. You just you know, appreciate seeing seniors down the stretch knowing that their end of their career is, is coming to an end making plays and and, and especially you know the, the last time they're going to play in front of this home 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 crowd seemed to be some sort of question of the uh some sort of wardrobe malfunction with 
T.Y. shorts there. And drawstring exposed. Free throw missed, 58-47. Three fouls on DeAndre Jackson, by the way, who has had a quiet game for the Sailfish. Golet pounding the basketball and was able to draw a foul on Young there. And it, I, I was about to say, it's just too much dribbling. You know, the ball got stagnant there. Everyone's watching Golet, but still, his aggressive take. He really has, uses his body well, and that's what he did. Got right up into T.Y. Hard to believe that's only his first foul of the game. So, T.Y. doing a very good job staying on the court and staying out of foul trouble. But Golet really likes to attack. Golet kicks it out. Johnson barely grazes the rim. Drushawn winds up with the basketball. Gets it away early. Bianco, his pass back is deflected. Viore tracks it down and pulls it out. Yeah, I think Coach Ryan will frustrate by a couple guys late getting involved in the play. I think he didn't want Marco to reset it, but the numbers just weren't there and the angles weren't either. Right. The Ori guns up a three and got it right wing. That'll atone for whatever decision Coach Ryan was just pleased with. And he let it fly, and like I said, I, 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 Marco can, can, can easily score up over 10 points a game. Oh, no he's, doubt. he's got the ability to hit from outside. That time he didn't hesitate. But then poor defense just, they got to get stops, and that's what's keeping Palm Beach in striking ranges. They make a great play, and then, you know, Palm Beach attacks and stays in it. So give them credit. They're not going away. 61-49, Viore's three pushed the lead to a game-high 14. But a quick answer, DeAndre Jackson with the scoop lay-in. 61-49, Ackard, here's Ingram. McLaurin stuck with the basketball and 10 to shoot. Bianco now into Young. Spinning into the zone, out. Three-pointer for Jushan McClure, and it's out uh, He has too big a feet, it's another long two. <laughs> it is. Any longer after the long jumper, knocked down by Jushan McClure. Eckert comes out of the timeout, Biori, Ingram, McClure, Bianco. And T.Y., same five that went into the timeout. The ball back live, eight and a half minutes to go in this quarterfinal matchup. Young jumps out looking for the steal against Morales, didn't get it. And so Riddle winds up in the lane to go to the basket. You know, take away the three and opens up driving lanes. And I was just about to say the defense really starting to clamp a little bit, but that's another opportunity for Palm Beach to get right to the basket in the driving lane. 23 points now for Riddle. Young, a pull-up 15-footer, got blocked. Viore there and missed point blank. 12-point game. Riddle is open and hits the three. He's got 26 points and again gets the game in single digits. He knew he was open. He was screaming for it the second the ball came in bound. And a transition, another wide-open transition, seventh on the game. There's a little screen, too, that helped keep him open. Nice job by Palm Beach Atlantic, fighting and clawing to stay in striking distance. 63-54, and McClure almost a chance for a three-point play, but will shoot two free throws. Media timeout comes first. So back and forth, back and forth, up to 14, now back to nine. You know, Riddle, he, he doesn't want his season. Season high for... Riddle is nine three-pointers on 19 attacks when he hung 33 on the board at Barry. Certainly time that he could get to a similar number in this one. As, as you said, he is currently 7 of 11 from distance. Even more efficient this time out. Sean's first free throw kicks away to the left. Second free throw missed as well. Stays a nine point game. Stones brings the ball up the floor. Interesting set here. Three stack to the far side. Stones gets the ball, Morales. And here comes Riddle. And tried to draw the foul that time. Doesn't get the call. Missed the shot badly off to the left. And sometimes when you're a shooter, 
focus a little bit more on trying to create that contact. Good piece of defense by Keyshawn Ingram. And I thought he was going to get called for a foul there again because of a similar play earlier in the half. 63-54 game, under seven minutes to go. Eckerd leading in their last game of the season on their home floor. Bianco, three in the air. Luck short. Rebound corralled by Jules Jalesman. Jasmine, nice piece of defense there. Boxing out, getting his body in between the basket. Stones forcing the action, draws the foul on Marco Biori. Just the first on Marco. That's a tough call. Looks like he got reached, you know, was able to get that and poke it from behind, but nice job attacking the basket again. Palm Beach has found some some ways to get their offense going by just attacking the basket, especially in transition. And here they are, back to eight, back to a three possession game. First free throw good, second one misses. McClellan the rebound. I'm not sure if they've had a two of two trip all game. It seems like they've all been one of one. And that's been a struggle. They miss eight now on the, on the game. 63-55, Ingram floats in the air and gets the roll. Seven feet away, the ball bounced in and out twice and went down to push the lead back to 10 at 65-55. Morales was looking for Jasmine Cutting, didn't have it. Riddle guarded tight. Gives it up, here is Jackson, missed it. Morales put back attempt, he's fouled. And that's gonna be four on McLaurin. That's a tough foul against him because it wasn't his man. He was just coming to try to get beat. And now he goes to the bench with four fouls. And Coach Ryan's upset because if you don't go for that steal out on the wing, you don't put that pressure on your backside defense, but you got a rebound too. They missed that second chance to corral that rebound. And now McLaurin goes to the bench with four. He's obviously very frustrated tonight. He just hasn't been able to stay on the court long enough to really give himself a chance to get in the groove. Meanwhile, another free throw miss. And for a team that shoots 70% from the free throw line, they are well below that average. And that's, I mean, that's going to come back. That's thats where you look at it. You said, guys, we've given ourselves a chance to be in this game. And then, you know, those things, you know, it's, it's kind of like the yips and, and putting. You know, you, you can't miss the four-footers, the five-footers, and it starts becoming a mental thing. 0 of 2 at the line for Morales. 65-55, Eckerd in front. Morrow around Young screen. Had Young open, but didn't have an angle to pass it to him. Morrow guarded by Jackson. Tablo Vicious tosses back to Morrow. Morrow triggers up a three, rattles out. A rebound grabbed by Jasmine, skying for the board. Stones down the middle of the floor, got Morrow up in the air, but travel. And you can see Keyshawn Ingram doing some good scouting. You know, most teams teach to retreat to the middle or inside. And that time, Keyshawn did a nice job finding Riddle, took away him, and, and didn't say necessarily forced it, but because he took away that passing option and everyone else was able to corral, it led to a turnover. 65-55, coming up on five minutes remaining in the game. Ingram, another floater, he pushes it in from 14 feet. And he's starting to feel something going. <laughs> nice finish. And that block at the other end takes the ball away. Ingram with 17 points to lead the Tritons. Biore three. Yes, indeed. A big time a play. Point lead. Unbelievable sequence there by Keyshawn Ingram. Going from the score with a heck of a steal. I mean, he just robbed him clean. And then comes down, draws the defense, and opens up his shooter way, chipping away, weathering the storm, allowing them, you know, and, and understanding this is a full-length game. And, and just when you make your small runs, it hasn't been an elaborate long run by Eckerd, but every time Paul Beach has gotten back into striking distance, they've really put their step, you know, foot on the gas and, and stretched this lead back out. Stone stuck on the baseline, gets it out. Riddle, three in the air, three in the net. He's made eight of them. Stuck his and that's feet. why I said that I won't call that Biori shot a dagger because this guy can shoot them back from any depths, it seems like. And, and tonight he's just playing. He's unconscious right now. Eight of 
13 from three-point range. Stuck his foot out again there to try to draw contact. Almost got it. Nothing but net. He's been really impressive, this, this senior from Palm Beach Atlantic, giving everything he has here on this, this end of the season. 70-58, Morrow absorbs the contact. Wave it off. Offensive foul. Second foul on Morrow, ninth team foul, so two free throws the rest of the way for Palm Beach Atlantic. Costa coming back into the game. A little bit of a delayed call, but the right call, Blake, just a little too much. I thought he was going to pull up for the jumper, come to a jump stop there. I was surprised when he forced the issue, forcing himself in physically. Morrow trying to mark Riddle. Coach Ryan says stop gambling. You just pull yourself. You don't. It's it's a low percentage risk. I mean, you know, the risk certainly out, outweighs the reward. Sure, you get the steal, but the chances of that play being made are so difficult. And if he misses he it. Two free throws. Right. Now, if, he, if he misses, you're playing five on four, and if you foul, you're going to be up two free throws. And that's, and that's right, and you're stopping the clock for a team trying to get back in this game, and now it's two, like you said, two straight, but they've struggled mightily, so maybe that is. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that is in a... That is four consecutive misses at the free throw line. In a, in a weird, cruel way, maybe that is the uh, the strategy. No, it certainly isn't what Coach Ryan wants, but... Because that one know, is good. Giving them now back again. It was a 15-point lead, four straight points in 25 seconds. Now it's 11 again. Palm Beach not going away, fighting with their season on the line. 70-59, under four to play. Double screens for Biori. He's able to vicious pops, young rolls. Young makes the catch inside under the basket, spins back left. Ball drifts across the rim and Zabla Vicious tips it in. And a great move, but just a fantastic follow. And that's that's bonus points from PZ and is able to make plays like that. Good job. Riddle almost able to knock that one down after Morrow slipped. It looks like his foot is looks a little it looks like he's okay. I wonder if Riddle stepped on him and kind of fought, made him fall to the ground. It's kind of his best look he's had in the last three shots he took. Coming up on 315 to go, 13 point game. The clock is Eckerd's friend. And foul drawn, shot won't bounce down. Ingram gonna have free throws coming. As we head to the last media timeout, a important update on the out of town scoreboard. The last game from the women's tournament tonight. A barn burner as Embry Riddle keeps it all chalk tonight. A 90-84 win over the uh, Jenkins Fieldhouse. So it should be a very interesting Friday, or excuse me, Saturday. Over, of, uh, over in Lakeland. First free throw up and good for Ingram. 3.11 left after that final media timeout. 73-59 now the score. And Keyshawn Ingram just explosive in a lot of ways. He's really kind of, you know, T.Y.'s been solid, of course, and chipping away, chipping away. But Keyshawn's really had a spectacular second half that really has giving them back this 15 point lead. 19 points for Ingram in the game. Viore almost a steal. Morrow scoops it up with a man on his hook and missed it, but kept up and in by Viore. Blake Morrow did everything he could to draw that foul there. I'm surprised he didn't call it. It really looked like a lot of contact, but good job by running the four and an easy putback, and now all of a sudden 17. Cross court pass, Caustic open right wing, and did not get the bounce on the three. Ball comes out, last touch by Palm Beach Atlantic. Eckerd with the basketball, 2.31 to go, 17 point lead. Should be able to bleed this one out. And give credit, the Tritons needed to make plays each time that there was a belief that Palm Beach could get back into a two possession game. Eckerd handle it. Some timely plays by Keyshawn Ingram and Marco Barori. Pass ahead, McLaurin freshly back into the game. Able to toss it away over to Ingram. 76-59. Uh, 
And if you're Coach Ryan, I think you also got to like it, considering the foul trouble that Jushan played, to have that depth to be able to find other players to step up. Ingram's three-point attempt, no. Fiore able to get the offensive board, wrestle it free, and fling it out to midcourt where Morrow was waiting for it. That's a huge offensive rebound in traffic. The motor that never quits. Ingram with eight rebounds and five assists in this game, by the way, to go with his 19 points. Morrow on the drive, blocked away out of bounds, stays with Eckerd with 11 to shoot. The seniors coming up huge. Trayvon Young, a first half double-double. Keyshawn Ingram making big plays all over the place down the stretch. And he's almost had a double-double himself. He's only got two rebounds away. Morrow fouled by Riddle, one and one. A minute 45 to go. The rebounding margin, once again, just good defense. Palm Beach just not quite effective in the two-point range being... First free throw, good for Mark. And you look at you look at their stats. They're 10 of 28 from inside three-point range. Uh, you know, from from two-point range, and 10 of 23 from three-point range. And you know, those missed shots certainly gives the Tritons an opportunity to extend that rebound margin. But that's been a huge key for them. Morrow completes a two of two trip to the line. So Acker will be advancing. Riddle, why not? Another three-pointer. You know, no, no one likes you know moral victories, and, and those are things that fans and, and, and you know broadcasters like myself and you may talk about. But I, I got to give my in Florida Southern's home arena. Pass comes in here, and the time will start running. Again, that final score on the Florida Southern men's game, an 80 to 70 win over Lynn. Packard and Florida Southern split their season series against each other. No urgency to look to score here. Ingram has the ball poked free. It will stay with Eckerd. Inbounded short tomorrow. He's double teamed foul. And uh, Blake Morrow has a chance to score double digits in this game, and if he makes both free throws, he will be the fifth Triton to do so. Morrow's first free throw. Pure as pure can be. So do you think that this goes to Riddle? Does he try to get another shot off? Yes. <laughs> for, a, for a career high in his last game? I, Absolutely. I think you have to. I'd, I'd be a little discouraged if he didn't. <laughs> If I were him, I might actually try to pull up just inside half court just to give it a shot. I like it. And you know what? I mean, there's a good chance he might make that. He sets the screen to get himself free. In the corner, Jasmine tries the three and bangs it home. You saw they were definitely looking for him. That action went that way. They're trying to draw a screen. 80-65. We're into the final minute of the last game on James Harley Court for this season, we expect. A good win, good finish there for the Tritons. And right away in for Don Chitch, he'll shoot a free throw as well. Uh, 82-65. And Coach Balza will call his seniors out. Or perhaps not. Riddle stays out there. 
So Riddle perhaps still with a chance to go try and get that new career high as he ends things. And Dakota Zinzer and Grant Gullett, you know, congratulations to them on a, on a great career. And we talked about that. This is the toughest part when you know your career is ending. Your time here, and, and we said it in the women's game, anytime you have a player, an athlete, be able to juggle academics at the college level and play high competitive sports, especially basketball in this conference, they deserve that recognition. Lucas Morales is the other senior on this team, and Milo's caustic. But Marshall Riddle trying to get a shot, and we'll see if we can get him one. There it is. Here it is. Three in the air. Oh. No, not this time. Stavrov with the rebound, and Riddle's career will come to an end on a miss, but boy, did he put on a show for us tonight, 9 of 16. And that's worth going for. Yeah, we'll give Coach Balls a credit for doing that. Eckert gave him. He got a great look, but great win for the Tritons, and Good job by Palm Beach Atlantic, giving this team uh, a chance and fighting to the end. And I'll tell you what, this is going to be a great basketball this weekend at, at Jenkins Fieldhouse. And uh, Sunshine State Conference Tournament never disappoints. It's going to be a fun final four for the conference.